Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Finance and Accounting Show. And today I have another wonderful guest on. And one of the things that I really like talking about is, is the wealth part and just how your business plays a role in that overall financial picture. Because it's one thing to understand the details of the accounting and the finance. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're not just trying to run a business just because we just love running a business. Not for most people. It fits into a greater strategy. So I have an amazing guest coming on. So definitely stay tuned because we're going to talk about that. Welcome to another episode of the Finance and the Accounting Show. This is the place to go for small business owners. If you're looking for a great way to understand the finance and the accounting side of your business, you're in the right place. So stay tuned and enjoy the episode. So without further ado, let me bring my amazing guest on, Jeff. Welcome to the show. How are you? Doing pretty good, Terrell. How are you doing? Awesome. Awesome. Well, that is definitely a pleasure to have you. Now, Jeff, you know, one of the things that stood out to me about your profile when we connected on LinkedIn is in your tag, you had a wealth multiplier. I love that. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about your background and just kind of how the wealth multiplier mindset came to you. Yeah. So definitely appreciate it, Terrell. Um, long story short, I was born and raised in Ghana which is on the west side of Africa. And I came to the United States when I was eight years old. Um, When I came to America, it was a pretty tough time, right? It was a very, very tough time. I was put into a neighborhood called Uptown in Chicago, which unfortunately at the time was not the best neighborhood in the world, right? To put anybody, let alone an eight-year-old kid that just came from Ghana. And so with that, fortunately, surrounded myself with um, the wrong crowd. Um, And life was tough. I mean, it was very, very tough. It was a grindful time. But thankfully, I went back to Ghana, um, you know, when I was 16, just took a family trip. And that's when I discovered my purpose in life, really, which is to inspire and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant lifestyle. Right. So uh, basically how I, I came about that was. Uh, when I when I went to Ghana, I saw a struggle for the first time, really, you know, um, that in being in Ghana. So, for example, I saw a lady that had not one but two babies wrapped around her back with a huge load of apples, oranges, right, whatever it took to make ends meet. And I said, you know what? I meant to help people like her. I meant to help individuals like her, super hungry individuals like her, take hold of infinite resources that we have on this planet in order to create an abundant lifestyle. And how I plan to do that is basically help people multiply their wealth through financial literacy, right? So that's where the term wealth multiplier ultimately comes from. So when I came back to the US, you know, life got better. I, you know, I started getting better grades, became more involved in my church. So my spiritual life definitely um, went up a lot. And, you know, I had a mentor who was showing me the ropes of life and teaching me these different concepts, things that you can do to avoid trouble or anything like that, that comes your way. I read half the Bible when I was 16. And in general, I surrounded myself with more like-minded people. And that's what helped me, you know, transition into a more abundant, you know, more positive um, lifestyle and mindset. I think that is awesome. I mean, that, that that's such a an amazing reality that I, I don't think you hear a lot of people talk a lot about is just how much, like you said, that mindset and that that eye opening experience changed the trajectory of where you are headed. I mean, now, now I, I always like to to do this from time to time. It's just like imagine if you'd have taken that life changing altering moment out of your timeline. <laughs> it's just like where would what direction would your life have gone if that that had not happened? I mean, yeah, it it would have been bad. I probably would be in jail, probably, you know, might have gotten shot, might have died. Um, Thankfully, God took me out of that situation, right? But there was definitely a lot of bad things that would have happened if that turning point didn't happen in my life. Gotcha. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Now, now I'm curious, I mean, when you, you know, talked about, you know, just helping people identify, see, you know, the, the wealth potential, uh, Mm -hmm. and the, the abundance, 
was that something that was also inspired by, like say, it was, was, was that something that you, your people in your family pursued that path or were you kind of like the first one breaking out into, like I said, this particular subject matter um, for yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, in general, um, so in Ghana, first of all, there's entrepreneurs, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in Ghana. You got people that sell clothes, shoes, you know, food, whatever it takes to make ends meet. And one thing that I saw with that was, you know, that's great from a hunger standpoint. I have the hunger and the drive, but there was no real abundance within that because mm -hmm. they were just, you know, basically working to provide food on their, the family's table. And that was it, right? There was no, oh, let me use this money, go and invest it and create a lot of wealth out of that. So essentially I wanted to be the change to that, be the change to the, you know, the scarcity mindset. Um, so it wasn't really something that like my family or anything, you know, but like, it's not like my family was abundant thinkers or anything like that. It's just something that sparked up within me, something that, you know, I basically took it upon myself to want to teach to the world, teach the society and, you know, reading books like rich dad, poor dad, and um you know cash flow quadrant for example how to win friends and influence people a lot of these books really help shift my mind into you know what although i haven't been taught these things from my own people my own family let me be the one that actually goes out and teaches people how to create an abundant lifestyle Gotcha. I love it. I love it. You know, and, you know, even as you were mentioning some of the names of those books, uh, I, was, I was doing an interview on someone's show and they asked me, like, you know, what's one of my favorite business books? And I say, you know, one of my all time favorite books is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm. And, you know, it's so funny how when I first read that book, like it might have been like back in 2008 or something. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize like how bad I was at, you know, dealing with people until I read the book and was like, wow. Mm. <laughs> Man, that book is deep. I mean, that book is deep, you know, teaching you how to react in a mode of anger. Um, like, you know, if, if there's anger that's around you, how to get away from that. If there's argument that's around you, how to get away from that how to, you know, how to agree to disagree. I mean, it, it just teaches you so many principles about life that, yeah, you're right. When you think about it, it's like, man, like, I wish I was doing these things. And for me, after the age of 16, I was, you know, I was shifting into that. But when I read the book, it allowed me to be more intentional with some, of, you know, some of those things and just avoid any negativity 100% at all costs, basically. You know. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, and I'm always curious as to, you know, when you hear different stories like that and, and people talk through, like I said, you know, a, a resource like the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And and I talk to different business owners and and they want to talk tactics <laughs> about, hey, what are the tactics? What are all the technical things that I need to do? But it's just like with those underlying, some would say soft skills, but I'm going to say critical skills that you need to be effective. It's almost like what your your technical skills that aren't going to aren't going to solve all of the problem that you need if you're missing those underlying fundamentals. I mean, mm -hmm. how have you seen, like I said, resources like how to win friends and influence people? How has that impacted the way you've been able to connect with more people to help? you know, reach and impact the lives of more people. Yeah. I mean, in general, it's, it's just made me more intentional about building stronger relationships. So instead of just doing it, just to do it, it's having some intention behind it. Like, Hey, we're doing this to truly build a relationship. We're not doing this just to be nice, right? We're not doing this just for common courtesy. We're doing this to build a community of abundance, right? We're building this to, build a network of business professionals that can truly work with each other, that can get in a room with each other, get along with each other and not just say, Hey, yeah, we're in this room because we're forced to be in this room. All right. So a book like how to win friends and influence people is teaching me. It teaches me more intentionality behind the relationships that, you know, that I decide to get involved with. 
And then in general, that's going to help with the whole abundance mindset, because part of abundance is being in a positive, you know, this whole, I see greater, greater things in life mode. So when you have people that hate each other or in a negative mindset, there's no real way you can create abundance because then everybody's going to be fighting each other instead of moving along and progressing in the progress. So for me, that's one thing that the book definitely taught me. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Now, you know, we talked about, you know, what that pivotal moment looked like for you and in, in changing your mindset and and really making those the mental clicks and the mental switches that you needed to to head in that right direction. But what was the journey like and actually, like I said, in building out, you know, like I said, the the business that you decided or the path that you chose? What was it like building in that process of really putting the pieces together, putting those mindsets into practice? Yeah, that's a great question, Terrell. I mean, ultimately, so I had always been an entrepreneur, you know, always wanted to be an entrepreneur when I was a kid. Um, I was a kid that if you gave me a candy bar, I would say thank you and go out and sell it on the streets. <laughs> right. I wasn't the kid that ate the candy bar. Um, so with that being said, entrepreneurship came in into me early. My parents are also entrepreneurs. And when I got to college, the U of I, I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, I was working on a business plan, um, a tax firm, CPA firm. And each day in college, I would spend at least an hour doing research on the business, right? At least an hour each day doing research. Um, and that, that helped me gain even more interest in the business. I'm like, okay, this can be something big, not just a moneymaker, but something that can change the world for the better. Right. So with that, I then started, you know, talking to other people that were doing taxes and mentors. And then I started doing taxes for people. Right. So essentially that allowed me to build the confidence that I needed to say, hey, I can do taxes. I can do this. I just need more time. And I just need to be, you know, basically, I just need more knowledge in the topic. So I kept doing that. Got an internship at PricewaterhouseCoopers or PwC, and ultimately, you know, I was interning there as an audit associate or an audit intern, and then I graduated from U of I with a bachelor's and master's degree, 2014 with a bachelor's, 2015 with a master's. Started full time um, for you know, I literally stayed there for a year, so I had got my CPA license before I started full time. Um, and you know, on September 2nd, 2016, something came about something. It was, it, it was one of those turning points in life again. Um, ironically for me, something big happens in my life every eight years, like eight years when I came to the U S 16, when my life turned around and 24, when I left PwC in 2016 to launch body tax services, LLC full time, right? Um, I was actually on my way to a barbecue on September, I believe it was September 1st, 2016. And I got called by a manager saying, hey, can you come to the office for today? <laughs> you know, can't really say no, but it was like, man, really? Is this, is this what life is really about? <laughs> so I got really fed up. And for other reasons, the next day, September 2nd, I turned in my two week notice. And then on September 16th, 2016, that's when I became a full-time entrepreneur to go ahead and launch Body Tax Services LLC, which is now a CPA firm that has over 2,000 clients across all 50 states in the U.S. And we also have clients in over, that reside in over 25 countries. Um, we've been able to build other businesses along, been able to build teams, right? I have my business coach, my mentor, um, and it, it's, it's been a great journey. Right? It's been a great journey. And you've talked about some of the stuff going from tactical to being more strategic. That's something that I've learned and that you have to build the right team so that you're not, you know, you're not stuck doing all the work. And I would say even for me in 2018, I literally went through a burnout phase where I almost said, I'm just going to leave the business, right? I'm going to go back to not necessarily go back to what I was doing because that was, that would defeat the purpose, right? But it was more so, man, is there something different that I need to do? And then I met um, a business coach and was able to teach me what we call the 12 practices of life and the 12 practices of business 
how to stay more organized, how to gain control over your time, and how to build a team in general. Um, so for me, this journey has allowed me to do things more significantly, to live a more balanced lifestyle, and to build something that I feel is going to be pretty big. You know, that's and for me, each and every day that I wake up, I'm here to fulfill my purpose in life, which is to inspire and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant lifestyle. Awesome. I absolutely love that. I mean, it, and, you know, it's, it's so true, I think, to what you talked about, just with the, the honesty of the journey of even as you're in the process of building the you, you do hit. If you don't have the right mindset for the level that you're playing on, you mm -hmm. know, you do run into that, like, maybe I should do something different or exactly. maybe I should go to a different path. So I, I absolutely love the honesty and the transparency there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now when it comes down to the services that you guys provide now, you I mean supporting over 2000 clients, your 50 states plus other countries, what are the types of services people can expect from Badu Tax? Yeah, so essentially we have tax preparation is our, you know, that that's the, the big service. That's our biggest service. Our core service, though, what separates us from most people is tax planning. That's where we're sitting down with clients going through various strategies to help them minimize their tax liability. Right. Then we also have tax representation. So we have tax preparation, which is preparing your taxes, tax planning, which is planning ahead of the year, right? Proactively planning out um, your taxes and then tax representation if you get in trouble with the IRS. So that's what them Badu Tax Services. We do have other companies as well. We have a real estate investment company named Badu Investments, where we acquire apartment buildings, mainly on the south side of Chicago. Then we have Badu Life and Health Solutions LLC which is more into the life insurance. So we do provide life insurance products and solutions. Um, and then we have other ones too. You know, we have like entity, we can help form legal entities. Um, we do have a separate bookkeeping company. So these are all usually within separate legal entities that are ran by different people. Um, but within the tax firm, the CPA firm itself, it's tax preparation, tax planning, and also tax representation. Awesome. I love it. So where can people find you online or social media to see all the great things going on and mm -hmm. all the, the amazing things you have going on? Yeah, great question, Terrell. So uh, my main website, I mean, the number one place to find me is my website, which is jeffbadu.com. So J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com, jeffbadu.com. And this is where you'll find out a lot of resources, right? You'll find out about my background, You'll find out the purpose book that I wrote, which is Infinite Expansion, how to infinitely expand your vision of abundance. Um, you know, the courses, the, the other two books that I've written, the Seven Figures book and the Legendary Asset book, all the blogs that I've written. I've written over 30 articles that pretty much demonstrate um, financial literacy, right? How to, how to get, how to build wealth. And then I have a vlog, podcast, scholarships even on there. And just a lot of resources. I mean, one thing about me is I like to make sure that people are equipped with the resources they need so that they can create that abundant lifestyle that they truly desire. And quite frankly, at least according to the good book that I've read, they truly deserve as well. Right. So jeffbaidu.com is the best place to go. You can also contact me on the website directly as well. Awesome. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, one question I always love asking every guest that comes on and and it, and it may be something that you repeat from something you said earlier is mm -hmm. what's two pieces of wisdom that you would leave with the audience? Yeah. So uh, great question, Terrell. Uh, first thing is try to find your purpose in life, right? Your purpose is something that drives you to do the things that you need to do. Um, so try to find something that you, you genuinely love. Like for me, it's teaching people about money, financial literacy, abundance, right? Maybe your thing is healing people, whether it be healing them from a physical standpoint, or you, you like to defend people in court. So maybe you want to be an attorney, right? Uh, whatever it is, your purpose is something that drives you. It's something that defines your image. It is truly who you are. 
So you can do this by going through various exercises. You can say, hey, between these three things, which one do I like doing the most? And then sustain that. Do it, sustain it for a long period of time. Let's say six months and see if you still like doing it, right? And then try to do it for free. I know some people might kill me for this, but <laughs> try to do it for free for that six months. And if you still love doing it, then it's probably something that you're passionate about and something that's tied to your purpose. So find your purpose in life. And number two, um, I would say something that's really coming to mind is trying to be well balanced in your life. Some people say there's no work life balance, but I would disagree with that in saying that you can always balance your life and understanding what you need to do from a business or work standpoint, and then what you need to do from a, a life standpoint. So, you know, you have physical, you have mental, emotional, you have all these various aspects of life that you really need to take care of because if you don't have that you can't run the business if you're working 18 hours a day right and in my case it was about 14 to 16 hours when i was at pwc and then when i left pwc <laughs> to start my own business thankfully now you know it's definitely reduced more than that about eight to ten you know each day on average so with that try to find balance in your life because life is not just working slaving for the dollar Right. It's um, there's a time and place for that. And there will be moments in your life where you might need to grind harder than other times. But what, what I would say is strive, at least strive for balance in your life and make sure your life and your business are well rounded and truly aligned and balanced with each other. Awesome. I absolutely love it. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for being an amazing guest. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you, Terrell. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Finance and Accounting Show. If you like what you heard, don't be selfish. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and then share this with a friend because you know a business owner that could definitely use this insight. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and turn on the notification bell so you get all the updates when we release a new episode.